Hi there. Uh, welcome to another installment of the Intune Guitar Academy. Today we are talking to Kelly Coughlin and we're talking about guitar tone. I wanted to talk to Kelly about his understanding and his background with uh, in terms of guitar and guitar tone specifically. Uh, we've we've been friends for a couple of years and we've discovered that we have the same same interests in uh, guitar and classic rock and uh, very much the same musical instrument and uh, interests so uh, let's begin by why don't you tell us a bit about yourself you've had quite an interesting life okay well um, I'm the son of a uh, diplomat my dad worked for foreign affairs we were posted all over the world um, I was born in France 1971 we were there for a couple years, moved to Egypt, spent uh, two years there, then we moved to England. I was five years in London. Uh, I went to school actually around the corner from Abbey Studios, which is pretty neat. At the time I wasn't into music that much, so I didn't know about that. Uh, then uh, we moved to Tunisia, I was there for about four and a half years. Then we moved to Chile, South America for three years. Then I moved to Iraq for one year, graduated there, came back to Ottawa in 1990, and I've been here ever since. So in a nutshell, that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much pretty a lot, lot more interesting than most people's lives. Certainly more interesting than mine. Yeah. So uh, how, how do you feel about living in Canada compared to other countries in the world? Um, well, truthfully, it was very hard to adapt after spending so many years overseas and living the diplomat uh, brat life. But over the years, I've really grown to love this country. Um, the winters are a bit of a challenge, but even that I've grown to appreciate. Um, you know, uh, winter is what you make of it. Get into winter sports, go skating, you can ski, do all kinds of fun stuff. But I, lo I love the stability uh, that we all take for granted here that uh, uh, is not available in many other countries. Financial stability, you can go to a bank machine and take money out. Uh, my brother was posted in Venezuela recently and uh, he would go to bank machines and half the time there would be no money in the bank machine. Um, let alone medical systems, uh, I could go on and on. But we, we're very fortunate to live in this country. I agree. I've never lived anywhere else but I have traveled around the world and uh, yeah. definitely we are fortunate living in the West. I guess it's the same for people in the United States and Western Europe. Uh, yep. We all enjoy the same level of uh, Standard prosperity London. prosperity so I started playing guitar when I was 14 I learned from my brother and the rest of it I've been self-taught and a few courses how about yourself when, when did you start playing guitar okay well this is where the traveling comes into play um, living in Tunisia at the time I was in grade four uh, well I've always loved music as far as I can remember my uh, let's start let's talk about my dad for a couple minutes my dad was a huge music fan Huge Johnny Cash, Gordon Lightfoot, um, Merle Haggard, senior and junior. Uh, he had music playing all the time. Eagles, he was a huge Eagles fan. So I grew up with that, and I grew to love music at a very young age. Uh, I remember the Grease soundtrack came out. We were living in London at the time. I remember Ghost in the Machine by the Police came out around that time. And I remember just sitting by the record player all day, just replaying these albums all the time. So, fast forward to Tunisia and how I learned how to play guitar. Uh, we had no TV, from what I recall. The only TV stations we had were the stations that we picked up in Italy, because we lived, we were about an hour boat ride from Italy, from Sicily. You could see Sicily from my house on the beach in Tunis. So we would get the Italian TV and radio stations, and, um, uh, where was I going with this? There wasn't a lot to watch, basically. So I was into ACDC at the time. I was entering my hard rock phase. So ACDC, Iron Maiden. And basically, I had a tape recorder. And I'll be honest, uh, life could get pretty boring living in the third world. Um, your school is tiny. My entire school consisted of a couple hundred people, max. It's kindergarten to, I think, my school in Tunis only went to grade seven, I believe. Anyways, uh, often there wasn't a lot to do. You would spend a lot of time at home. So I, uh, I was using my tennis racket and I'd be rocking out to my tennis racket, lit bang, you know, listening to ACDC cranked. And one day my dad had the brilliant idea of saying, hey, Kelly, why don't you go get a guitar? So 
My parents divorced in 1976 when we were in England, so my mom stayed in England while I kept traveling with my father and my brothers. So I was in Tunis at the time, and I went to visit my mom. I don't remember if it was Christmas time or summertime, but I went to England and she bought me uh, my first acoustic guitar, and that's really how it all started. Okay. A really cheap, crappy guitar. The strings were like that far off the neck. <laughs> it was awful. It was horrendous. I wish I kept that guitar. So you were about 10 years old at the time? I guess. Okay. Whatever fourth grade is, about yeah, 10, 10, 10 years, years old, prepubescent, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can yeah. share a similar story because my, my family was also very musical. My brother had a huge record collection. I used to listen to it all the time. He got me into Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, nice. all the old classic stuff, the Eagles as well. So he was your mentor? He was my mentor, my my, uh, my mother as well. She was all t always into music, but she listened to the strange music, like um, I called it supermarket music. <laughs> oh of, yeah, uh, Connie Francis? You no, know, some stuff like that, and it wasn't really my thing, but I had music playing all the time, so it gave me the love of music probably around yeah. the same time, same age. I had yeah. my own little transistor radio, listened to it all the time, and uh, I just, cool. music fanatics, music freaks. Yeah. So, uh, now that you've been playing a number of years, I guess you've been playing for, what, 20 odd years, 30 years? Yeah, well, I'm, it's hard I'm, to uh, I'm 48 and I started around 10, so 38 years. I should be a much better player, <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Well, I find uh, music is a lot like sports. Uh, you have to find out early if you're really super talented. Exactly. Then, that, then it becomes your uh, yeah. your main goal. And only about 1% of all really good athletes become professionals. And yep. I'd say it's about the same thing for musicians. Yeah, I agree. Anything that's a performance art of that sort of nature. Yeah. So it takes, uh, it takes the luck of a draw. But You know, tr luck. truth be told, as much as I might fantasize about being a rock star living that lifestyle doesn't really appeal to me because I would have been dead a long time ago well we've seen if I was. recently the number of deaths I think were attributed to yeah. uh, the rock star life. it's the rock star life lifestyle definitely like David, David Bowie died of uh, Prince Michael Jackson Michael all Jackson. medication related medication related David Bowie had uh, liver yeah. cancer which is probably from yeah. his uh, Alcohol. Alcoholism, drug use, yeah. uh, same Greg Allman, same type of thing. Yeah. So uh, uh, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. If it wasn't drugs, it was heroin. It's not an easy Bon life. Scott. Yeah, exactly. And then a lot of them end yeah. up with uh, arthritis. Like uh, Glenn <laughs> yeah. Frey had uh, severe arthritis, and that Ooh. that led to his uh, his passing. Yeah. yeah. You know, while we're on that subject, I have uh, what's called the Puytren syndrome. It's these nodules building in my hand and slowly my hands turning into a claw i was gonna have surgery just last december and i canceled it because the risk is not worth the side effects so for now i'm living with it but yeah age is creeping up is that your strumming hand or? it's my strumming hand yeah but i mean again it's not really affecting my playing and once it gets bad enough i'll deal with it but anyhow all right so um how many music lessons have you taken? Are you, would you consider yourself more self-taught or? Um, Definitely self-taught. Okay. Um, I have taken a few lessons. Um, my first teacher actually was the guitarist of Monkey Junk, Tony D. Really? Okay. Who was my first <laughs> teacher. Quite an impressive teacher, but um, truth be told, he was pretty bad uh, as a teacher. Incredible player, absolutely incredible. And I'll give you an example of how he was not a great teacher. So I sat down with him at Lausanne Music, and my first lesson, he uh, he says, learn Little Wing. And I was kind of taken aback by that. I thought we would have started with something slightly easier. And um, yeah, it, it didn't go well. So, so that kind of turned me off of lessons, to be honest. Um, and the only other lessons I've ever taken, so, so I'll finish that story. I, I think I took two lessons from Tony D and I just decided to cancel it. it I, I didn't find it was working well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, years later, I met this fellow through my good friend Alejandro in Chile, because my high school years were in Chile. Uh, this guy, his name is Juan Andres and Anderson. Um, he is an absolutely incredible guitar player and we started doing Skype lessons. 
And that was really beneficial. Okay. Um, and it also opened my mind to the fact that you don't need a guitar teacher in your own city anymore with today's technology. It, it was fantastic. He was in Chile, same time zone. Um, and I learned a lot from him. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And what is your practice routine now? How, how do you keep yourself uh, motivated to play? You're, not, you're currently not in the band, I take it? So uh, Not really. We jam. That's pretty much it. So, so that's an interesting topic is practice. When you love guitar as much as I do, and I'm sure many guitarists feel like this, uh, I don't really ever consider it, it practice or a chore. I play all the time. I play every day. I don't think there is a day that I'll uh, pick up my guitar. I've got a Tweed Deluxe by my couch. Um, I'm lucky to have a wife-to-be that allows me to have uh, an amp and my guitars in my living room. I play every day and I love it and I'll never stop. Uh, if I were to put some context to the time, I'd say probably an hour a day is realistic. But I don't really have a set practice regimen and I'm weak in that respect. I really need to be more disciplined and focused, which is why um, after 38 years of playing, I'm still hammering out power chords and playing ACDC songs. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That's always been a challenge I find for any guitar players, uh, the plateau. You get to a certain level that you just can't progress. And exactly. There's a plateau. It's very hard to pass that. And there, there's yeah. a number of plateaus. It's just it doesn't yeah. just you don't just stop and then get better. You have to plateau, improve a bit. Right. Plateau, improve a bit. It's so but it's, I find it's kind of like it's a very incremental gradient in terms of once you're a decent player, it's really hard to get much better. And that's actually what I struggle with the most. I'm very frustrated. Uh, some of my friends think I'm an amazing player, and I truly think I suck. And I cannot be more honest about that. I think I suck bad. Well, I think most really, really good guitar do. players feel the same way. They're, they're never satisfied. I'm That's... not even close to being satisfied, because I think I know what potential I have. Mm, okay. So, what would you think it would take you to get to focus, that level? Focus. focus. I'm not focused. I believe that I have ADD for real. I wasn't diagnosed as a child, but I was always in trouble in school for not paying attention. So I'm convinced I have attention deficit disorder, uh, which will quickly lead us down the uh, subject of why I've owned 107 amps. And I find it hard to focus. I just, um, if I could focus more, I think my guitar playing would radically improve. 